How to Think Like a Genius. Jacob Barnett was only three years old when he began to show signs of being a genius. During an outing to a local planetarium, one of the presenters asked the audience why the moons of Mars are odd-shaped like potatoes. The three-year-old Jacob simply raised his hand, Excuse me, but what are the sizes of the moons around Mars? The lecturer answered and Jacob looked at him and said, The gravity of the planet is so large, the moon's gravity will not be able to pull it into a round shape. You can guess what happened next. The entire auditorium was silent, with everyone probably wondering who this little boy was. Well, this little boy who was diagnosed with autism at the age of two was like any other random kid who attended a public school at the time. However, he soon became bored and wanted more. His parents were left with no choice but to visit a psychologist for professional advice on how to handle the little boy's education. They took the psychologist's advice and withdrew him from school and he was allowed to sit in on astronomy and advanced math classes at Indiana University, Purdue Institute, Indianapolis. Jacob prepared for proper college schooling by learning in just two weeks prerequisite high school math, algebra 2, geometry, trigonometry to calculus all by himself. Good news, he passed all the tests that was needed to exempt him from school and he enrolled at the college at the young age of 12. At 13, he was admitted to the Perimeter Scholars International, a one-year non-degree master's level program. He completed the program at age 14 and has subsequently been listed as a doctoral student at the Perimeter Institute. Catherine Pulsifer Dalt once said, We all have genius within us. Never doubt that fact. A genius as defined by Wikipedia, a person who displays exceptional intellectual ability, creative productivity, universality in genres or originality typically to a degree that is associated with the achievement of new advances in a domain of knowledge. If according to Pulsifer Doubt, we all have genius, the ability to display exceptional intelligence and creative productivity within us, how can we begin to think like one? In this video, I'll share with you how to think like a genius. This, I believe, will help you become a successful person. If you're new here, consider subscribing so that you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Being a genius requires creativity, which doesn't require a special form of intellect. However, learning how to use the intellect you have to produce results is what makes you a genius. So, how can you become one? 1. Brainstorm Generate as many ideas and alternatives as possible. The whole idea is to task your brain enough to come up with as many ideas as possible. Do not worry about the quality of the idea just yet. Just pen it all down so that you can go back to filter, readjust, or toss out most of them in the end. However, training your brain to think far and wide beyond what every other person would normally think is essential. Also be sure to keep an open mind when brainstorming. No matter how wild and unlikely the idea you're generating looks, keep them rolling in. Always remember that to look at old subjects with new eyes, one has to consider different perspectives until you find the one that best suits the situation or the one that works pretty well for you and a majority of people. 2. Consider your experiences. Every one of us has a unique experience of life which is why we all have different perspectives and responses to different subject matters in life. Morgan Housel of Collaborative Fund made a point when he was talking about some of the ideas that changed his life. According to Housel, your, our personal experiences make up 0.0000001% of what has happened in the world, but it represents about 80% of how we think the world works. So, we mostly see different situations through our different perspective. However, capturing all the individual mental representations you use when it comes to dealing with your life into one large single representation that includes your whole knowledge of how the universe works are the most effective way to think. Maria Konnikova, a renowned Harvard psychologist, writer, and author of Mastermind, How to Think Like Sherlock Holmes said, and I quote, 
A mind that can find connections between the seemingly unconnected can access its vast network of ideas and impressions and detect even faint links that can then be amplified to recognize a broader significance if such a significance exists. Insight may seem to come from nowhere, but really it comes from somewhere quite specific, from the attic and the processing that has been taking place while you've been busy doing other things. For instance, when Jacob responded to the question he asked the lecturer at the local planetarium, he spoke based on his several encounters on that subject matter. It's okay to say Jacob was very knowledgeable as far as that subject was concerned because he must have had a few experiences regarding that subject, obviously. So, do not put out your experiences and seek to get more. Take time to think and reflect more on them. Because when you do, the knowledge will be more readily available when you need it most. Also, when you do, you make a mental distinction between what is important and what isn't. According to Conicover, when we observe, we are forced to pay attention. We have to move from passive absorption to active awareness. We have to engage. We will become more active with our thoughts, especially regarding our personal experiences. We can handle situations better because we have most resources to pull from when we need them the most. 3. Make a list of possible solutions. After brainstorming and considering your personal experiences, what next? Getting solutions, isn't it? When faced with a challenge or problem, most people think hard enough to come up with a single solution that can help deal with it, right? Well, as a genius, it is important to consider various solutions to one problem. Coming up with one solution only wouldn't allow you to find out if it is the best conclusion at the time. But when you create multiple solutions, you are able to evaluate properly. This is it. The more time you spend brainstorming and thinking, you are more likely to come up with ideas and solutions that are original and great. Geniuses are referred to one, not because they have the ability to think in many different directions, but because they have some of the best solutions to mankind's problems. Consider Thomas Edison, for instance, who changed the world of technology. Albert Einstein changed the world of physics. Charles Darwin changed the world of biology. According to Karnik Hover, we all have two kinds of systems of thinking, but a majority of us would rather stick to the norm, the laser thinkers, because it is faster and easier. Karnik Hover puts it this way, I'm going to give the systems monikers of my own, the Watson system and the Holm system. You can guess which is which. Think of the Watson system as our naive selves, operating by the lazy thought habits, the ones that come most naturally, the so-called paths of least resistance, that we spent our whole lives acquiring. And think of the home system as our aspirational selves, the selves that will be, once we're done, learning how to apply this method of thinking to everyday lives and in doing so, break the habits of our Watson system once and for all. Summary. To be a genius means to be a creative thinker, someone who can provide a well-thought-out solution to one of mankind's problems. It requires investing one's time in. 1. Brainstorming. Continuously coming up with ideas to expand your capability to come up with as many solutions to a problem as possible. 2. Considering one's personal experiences, your experiences can make you unique from everyone else in the world. We see the world through the eyes of our experience, which is why you should not ignore this when coming up with solutions. 3. Pursue more than one solution. When you create more than one solution to a problem, you can evaluate properly before arriving at your perfect conclusion, your solution to the problem. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.